There's not a whole lot of things out there that can ruin your life as much as a horrible sound and snare. So um, I'm just going to give you a couple of tips on just some common issues that might help you figure out why your snare is just not sounding good. Sometimes you're messing with it, um, you know, you're spending some time fiddling with the thing, and you just you can't get it to sound right. So here's just some common things that I've picked up from years of, uh, you know, working in a, in a music store in the drum department, seeing all kinds of snares come in in all kinds of different conditions, reconditioning snares and all that other kind of thing. So here are my um, most common reasons for why your snare might sound like crap. So if you currently have a snare drum that's not sounding good, grab it right now and sit in front of the screen and let's go over this thing together. All right. First and most common issue when you're rolling up on a snare, either, you know, if you're sitting in on a gig or something, or um, you grab a snare from a backline kit, or if it's your own snare and it's not sounding good when you hit it, the first thing you should check is the bottom head. This bottom head should be nice and tight. If it's not, that's mainly the, uh, the reason why it's just not sounding good. There's been so many snares I've picked up and um, I check that bottom head and it's really loose. Sometimes as loose, if not looser than the top head. And um, you know, you're wondering why the thing doesn't sound good. So that's the first thing you should check. Check the bottom head. If it's loose, grab a couple of drum keys and just crank it up real nice. You don't have to choke it out. Please don't choke it out. But make sure that bottom head is nice and tight and, um, and give it a hit on the top. Readjust the top head if you want, just put it wherever you want it. Um, but that bottom head should be nice and tight. That should almost instantly fix your problem if it's a higher quality snare drum. Second problem I see a lot, check the top head and, um, and its general condition. Sometimes it could be a little deceiving the best way to check it is to loosen it off fully. If the head dips in the middle like this, it's time to toss it. It's been stretched to capacity. Just make sure though, if you do that, keep a new head close by. Because the thing is, if that is indeed the problem and it dips in the middle, once that happens, it's unusable. You can't retighten it up. As tight as you want to do it, it's still gonna dip once you've already loosened it. So you gotta take it and toss it, put a new one on there. Another thing to check is the uniformity of the tension rods around the drum. Top and bottom, you should check, as a matter of fact. But, um, but definitely on the top, you gotta to make sure that these are all relatively the same tension all the way around. Because what can happen, if these are all wonky, like if this is one tension and this is another one, this is another one, there's a harmonic in front of each one of these tension rods. And when they're at different tensions, you get a higher harmonic here and a lower harmonic here. So if it's a 10 lug snare or an eight lug snare, you get, you're gonna have all of these different harmonics ringing out at the same time. And you just get this horrible metallic ring that just drives you nuts. So you wanna get all of these the same tension so the harmonic is the same all the way around. That's why you see a lot of guys when they're tuning, they'll sit there and they'll do this. You know, they're listening out for harmonics and they're just trying to get them all the same. If you use two keys, put one here, put one here and turn them both at the same time, starting from scratch, obviously, um, that's the best and quickest way that you'll be able to get all of these at relatively the same tension. They don't have to be exactly spot on. If they're in, the, in that ballpark, you know, within a, within a quarter turn or whatever, um, then they'll be, they'll be pretty good all the way around. So using two drum keys is just the fastest and quickest and most effective way to get them all tuned uh, uniformly the same. You don't have to go out and spend money on a tune bot or any kind of gadget. Um, to help you do that. Just use two keys and use your ears, you'll be fine. 
Another thing you can check is the snare wires. These snare wires here, a lot of guys don't really think about checking the snare wires on these snare drums. Sometimes these things will just be stretched out. So if you're messing with the dowel and you have it as tight as it can go and it's still really loose on you, it just means that these are stretched out and it's time to toss them. Um, snare wires, in fact, have quite the effect on the overall sound of your snare drum. So if they're stretched out, it's going to sound hollow. It's going to sound excessively, you know, snary. So having new, uh, new wires underneath there would just kind of help the overall drum sound really good. So check the wires. If they're old, if they've been on there for a really long time, there's a good chance that they're just stretched out and it's time to put new ones on there. Now, another problem that a lot of guys have, because I get a lot of emails from viewers having problems with snare drums. <clears throat> and please keep in mind, but before you email me with any kind of snare drum problem, it's really tough to remedy the problem when I don't have it in front of me. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to try to solve snare drum issues by email. You know, I really have to have the thing in front of me so I can hear it and see what's going on with it and whatever. But a lot of guys I'm discovering um, that had these snare drum problems just have cheap snares. You know, a lot of these guys are playing snares that came with their starter kit. And generally those snares that come with the starter kits are really cheap. And um, it's not necessarily that they're not well made. This is a, a gig maker shell um, from Yamaha. And as far as beginner snares go, this is probably one of the better built ones. But, you know, if we're talking about CB kits and, you know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the generic brand name kits that you never really heard of, under 500 bucks, the snare that comes with the thing is going to be like way super cheap. So you're literally at the mercy of the quality of the snare at that point. The parts that they put on the thing are really cheap. You get things like plastic throw-offs that really aren't strong enough to hold for too long. Um, really cheap butt ends on the other side. Um, sometimes the, the lug inserts will be of crap quality. The tension rods will have like burrs on them. So what you might think is tight really isn't. It's just getting stuck because there's burrs on the thing. Um, there's a lot of problems that you can run into with cheap snares. So there are things that you can do to sort of help out with some of that stuff, like companies like Gibraltar, for instance. Any snare part you want, Gibraltar makes aftermarket. So if you want to replace, um, if you want to replace one of the hoops or something, you want to put a stronger hoop on there, you can just buy a hoop from Gibraltar. Um, things like that. Throw-offs, you can change the throw-offs if you want. You just got to check the, the hole spacing because sometimes it's different. Some snares have four, some have two. Stuff like that you got you to gotta worry about. But, um, yeah, if you're dealing with a cheap snare, sometimes it's just worth the investment to go a level up. You know, spend 120 to 150 bucks on a mid-level snare like an export or, you know, uh, Tama. Superstar, I think their their midline is. It's not a bad idea to eventually, you know, if you just got your starter kit, think four or five months down the road, save up some coin and get yourself a better snare drum for that kit. It's just going to sound better. It's going to perform better. It's going to hold its tune better. All of that kind of stuff. There's really only so much you can do with a cheap snare. So you can try all of the things that I mentioned before if that's what you're dealing with. But better idea, man, is to just go out, spend some dough on a, on a good quality snare. Um, as far as checking the hoops, one common problem that I used to see a lot with, with cheaper snares that come in these, these starter kits is that the hoop is slightly out of round. And when that happens, you tighten it down, you'll see a huge gap on this side, and it'll be really tight 
on this side. So the head is really not sitting properly. So you might actually, on some kits, I've even seen wrinkles. Once everything is tightened down, you still see wrinkles on this side. That's because the hoop is out of round. And when you tighten it down, it's not doing anything. So um, putting a stronger hoop on a cheap snare will help. But even when you buy a really decent quality hoop, you're going to be spending about 50 to 60 bucks on it. You're halfway towards a, a, a new, better snare. So anyways, that's my advice. There are other problems that you can encounter with snare drums, but those are the most common ones that I used to run into all the time um, when I worked at a music store. I can guarantee you that one of those first five that I mentioned will probably end up solving your problem. So check those out. And by the way, if you haven't already seen it, there is a full snare drum tuning tutorial on my channel. Make sure you check that out. Um, you'll have to invest about 16 minutes into watching it, but after that 16 minutes, you're going to know everything you need to know about tuning your snare drum and any other snare drum you play after that. You'll be able to tune the thing, get a great sound in less than a couple of minutes. Real easy. Even if you've never tuned a snare drum before, like it's, it's that simple. So make sure you check that out. Uh, that's about it. I think I covered most of it. Thanks for watching. Good luck and see you in the next video.